I use whiteboards a lot. I've left them private because I found I'm very visual. I guess most of you may be too. So what we're not told about in our general education or from any source of education is that there are really two worlds. We have a private world, which we really don't hear much of. Uh, we know maybe the elite around the world might be uh, very private. They may operate there. And then we have what we call public. And public is just a, a reality set up by those who control the globe. But it might not be, in fact, reality. It's their reality. <clears throat> um, is there anyone here dealing with uh, any at any level of government, for instance, uh, federal, state, council? Anyone had dealings at the moment or in the past? Uh, uh, most, yes. Yeah, most people <laughs> probably do. <laughs> and have you ever felt like that? You know what what you were requesting wasn't heard, that you were getting nowhere with them. Yeah, a lot of nods. Yeah. Well, let me pose a question. What right does a slave have? Does a slave have any rights? No. Does it sometimes feel like you're a slave? Yes. As much as we don't like admitting it. Well, perhaps we are a slave. You know, the scriptures say we're born into slavery. Anybody... Uh, have a license with it. I don't have one, so I can't show you one, but I can show you a credit, a debit card. You probably can't see it anyway, the name on it, but if you look at anything that's issued by the state, the first document, point of origin, is your birth certificate. But if you look at your passport, licenses, bank cards, um, library cards, anything that's issued, even uh, an RSL card, you'll see that the name usually is in capital letters or the last name might be in capital letters or the middle initial might be a capital whereas the name's in full elsewhere or any other derivative other than John Henry Doe, the full name in the English language, that is the only way of actually correctly spelling the name of the living life force. Any adulteration from that, including Mr. or Dr. John, could be uh, J.H. Doe, any other combination other than this combination is a fiction. In technical terms, it's called a Sedeke trust because a trust is set up when the living baby is, is born. And at the same time, an imitation is, if you like, birthed. But there are two births. There's the birth of the living, there's the birth of the vessel, which is a ship. <clears throat> and because we're under admiralty, it's evidence of the birthing of a vessel. Now that vessel, which is an imitation or a mirror image, if you like, is a mirror just, just here. Take that out. There's a mirror here. So in, in the real world, in the private, there is always an image in the public. Over here you've got a man or a woman or people. Over here you've got person. And if I labour on this issue alone, then forgive me, but for those of us who've been around it a while, you know, we're very familiar with this, but for new people, it takes quite a bit to grasp, uh, get the mindset around it. Just recently in um, Sydney, I had um, a couple that came up here looking for help. They, they had a holiday up here, but they heard that you know we were pretty active up here, and they were using, they were connected with some people in Melbourne and New, and, uh, New Zealand. They had an issue with the tax department. The dad and he, they've got some business companies and trusts, and uh, we're talking lots of zeros. And <clears throat> you're also talking, 
looking at maybe uh, their empire being attacked. So they're very concerned. The young ones picked up on it very quickly. We did a half hour presentation, but Chris organised. <coughs> and they knew that maybe here's a remedy with this process. So they went back and got they tried to explain it to Dad. So eventually, after two weeks on the phone every day, he was open enough to have us come down there and just talk it through him. And he said, "This it, the difference here between man and person, he said it cannot be that simple. He, his mindset could not come around that. But the daughter and son eventually talked him around it. So if you don't get hold of this concept straight away, don't worry, it took some of these a few months, a few weeks, and sometimes it takes longer and sometimes you can get it instantly. But at law, words, are they not used with deadly precision? Anyone here been through courts? I know a few of you have. I mean, maybe the new ones. Have you looked at the judge or the magistrate, the registrar, when they actually make an order they are very, very selective uh, over the words that they use because words have uh, a very specific meaning. I'm going to share a few words in a minute. But they don't use, the point is they don't use words um, loosely. And that's where we need to polish up on language because we're not taught really language anymore at school. Anyone remember we used to be taught pronouns and nouns and, and adjectives and, and prefixes and all sorts of things? Well, the children don't get that today. I wonder why. That off. <coughs> I'll jump around a little bit here and there, but I'm going to give an example of some things. So I don't I give myself notes so I don't forget things. But here I've put a manual together. If you look at page one there, you'll see some definitions of words. The word I'm looking for actually is on page three at the top of the page. This gives you an idea. And I use this a lot when I'm talking to anybody in the public because they're making a presumption. Some key words that one must know. Presumption is something that is assumed to be true but not yet proven. A presumption like your steak chattel. I'll backtrack there, I forgot to mention. Anyone here working in the public? That they are public? Because. Uh, I have to indemnify myself here, put a disclaimer in. I can't be seen to be messing with state chattel. So if anyone is acting as a chattel or believes they're a chattel, well, this isn't the forum for you. Because this is a private meeting today by agreement, mutual agreement between each party attending. So I don't get into trouble because people can go to jail messing with state chattel. Because if one is a corporation, and I'll go through how that works shortly, if one is a corporation, then one is a chattel or a slave. <coughs> but if you look at the definition here of person, and I use that whenever I'm in the public, because they're making the presumption now that I'm a person or a chattel, particularly police, but certainly lawyers, tax officers, uh, bureaucrats, anyone like that. You're the person, you're, you're that person, aren't you? No. But you live in Australia? No. I don't think so. Oh. And they get deflated, then they've just lost. <laughs> How can I live in Australia? Australia is a corporation. That's right. If I live in a corporation, I must be also part of the fiction. A corporation. You know, a maxim of law. If one is adulterated, all is adulterated. So, how can I live in Australia? I might live on the land that some people call Australia, and others might call Terra Australis, and there's maybe a dozen different names. But don't I live on the land? Yeah, well, you know, see how language is used against us by ignorance? 
our own ignorance. Okay, person. In general usage, a human being. And the tax officer says, ah! I said, would you like me to read out what human being means? Oh, no, don't worry, don't worry. They, they lost there and there. Okay. A natural person. Natural, well, is something that is there, it, you know, natural. But person is, is the same thing again. So it's an oxymoron mixing apples and pears. That means it's adulterated. Though by statute term may include, but isn't limited by, a firm, labour organisations, partnerships, associations, corporations, legal representatives, trustees, trustees in bankruptcy, or receivers. That's Black's 5th edition, nine, um, page 595. That's what this is. So words are very specific. Do I? That's what I said to him. Do I look like a person to you? Yeah. Really, put it down on affidavit and sign it. Am I not a man? Yeah. Well, how can I be both? Isn't a person a corporation? And that will get you dumbfounded. So you just read out the definition and watch their jaws drop. Do I look like a trustee or a corporation? This is mandatory. If you really want to understand or comprehend, is to understand means to stand under somebody's authority. So if a judge says to you, do you understand, like what Karen said, you know, I'm not sure, but I do comprehend, and he had a big smile. There. See, words? I don't go anywhere without that thing. Black started back in 1892, Black's first edition. The, last, the most recent is Black's 8, which is current. But, you know, these are about $400-odd, so I got it from America for 40 But there are other dictionaries, you know, there's Bouvier's, which is not maybe so flat. This is probably the most popular in the world. But there are a whole bunch, Mackenzie's and, and others. We've got uh, Black's One, actually, on a DVD, if anyone wants, wants a copy. But there are two books that I take with me wherever I go. One, so I comprehend their language and use it against them. And the other one is an authorised version of the King James Bible. Now, I'm not a Bible basher. I'm not even religious because I'm not, I haven't uh, religion myself away from point of origin, the creator, to the deceiver who was thrown down to earth. That's religion, man-made religion. And all of the Bibles, by the way, are adulterated, but I don't care about all that. Do you know why? Because the system uses it. You know, if they swore an oath to Mary Poppins, I'd use that against them. But they don't. They swear an oath to the Queen, who incidentally, in her coronation oath, says that this book, the authorised King James Bible, is the book that the world affords, is the greatest book that this world affords. Now, I didn't say that. She did. And if she believes it and swears an oath to it, then I use it against her and her subordinates, which are all the people in the public, in the Western world. They all have an oath to the Queen, don't they? When they take a job, don't they have to make an oath of office? They swear to the Queen, naughty, naughty, naughty. Because we already have, if you're one of faith, we have an oath to our Creator. So they've now sworn away from the Creator. That's a naughty. And they make you the guilty party when you're in court. When in fact, all you have to do is reflect it back on them. Why, <coughs> Why are you serving another master? When in fact, you ought to be point of origin. So those two books are very powerful and, and can be used against them. Might a, uh, look at a couple of other. Oh, I love this one. Sophistry. I'll go into it in more details. Also, on page three. A deliberately invalid argument displaying ingenuity in reasoning in the hope of deceiving someone. Isn't that beautiful? 
because isn't that what the system does all the time? They make these outrageous claims against us. It's a deceit. So if you, uh, could you show where what you're doing is not defined as sophistry? And they look it up and they do their pants. The game's over because you're aware that they're being a little bit naughty. There's a lot of different uh, definitions, and I won't go through them all, but there, there's some very powerful concepts there. Things like, um, we used to sign documents as, as undersigned, and then I realised that that was a person. And I didn't want to be a person, so I used the word principal. Or a primary creditor, if you like. So those words are there. There's a whole bunch of different words there, which I won't go into here. But why don't those authorities listen to us anymore? <clears throat> Maybe they have a different master. When one registers, you know when you get a license, for example, are there conditions attached to a license? Yes. Absolutely. You know, there are road rules, aren't there? If you get a license, this is here are the road rules, and this is what you have to comply with. If you don't have a license, perhaps you don't need to be complying with those rules. And I'm not talking about deliberately going breaking laws, because we need to be honourable. It's a dishonour being in the public. So our intent, one of three big words I hope that everyone goes away with here today, presumption, or breaking presumptions is better. Breaking presumptions. What that means is when the state presumes you're a debtor, or a defendant, or a corporation, or a person, some people know it as a straw man, because it's just a cartoon character, if you like. It's fiction. If you can learn how to break that presumption by the words that come out of your mouth or setting up some documentation, then you come from the public back here into the private where you can be free. Over here, chattel, slave, bondage if you like. People of faith are not to be in bondage. We're not to be actually be indebted either. Another word for you know having borrowings. We should be over here as creditors. Creditor. Very powerful word. Over here a debtor. Here we have substance. Over here we have. Uh, fiction, substance or real, <clears throat> like for example currency, gold, silver or gold and silver coins. Over here we have fiat, if you like, you know, Federal Reserve notes, Australian, or well, sorry, Australian Reserve notes, Reserve Bank notes. What does fiat mean? It's a cat. Lack of substance. It costs maybe five or six, six cents to produce a fifty hundred dollar note. It has nothing, <coughs> no intrinsic value. Whereas <coughs> in the old days, you know, if you had gold or silver coins, it was melted into the, you know, that shape, whatever. The actual metal was extracted out of the ground by somebody's labour. And effort went into its production. It had some backing. It had substance. But notes is nothing. It has absolutely no value. Nor does uh, what they call... <coughs> there's two forms of currency that is legal tender now. It doesn't make it substance, but it's legal tender. Just look up your Bills of Exchange Act, 1909 for Australia. It talks about legal tender, such as checks notes, like you, actually I just gave my last ones for the room, but Karen's got plenty of them, you know the uh, 5, 10, 20, 50, 100 dollar notes, it's actually a promissory note, here's one of, one of my own, 
that one got caught up in my machine, so I ditched it again. But anyway, it's a good example. That is like a hundred dollar note, because we can create them too. But the banks don't like it because we get into competition with them. <laughs> it's good fun creating something out of out of nothing. But yeah, over here, those notes, that is money of exchange. That's one form of uh, legal tender. The other is money of account, which is just digits. You know, and most of the economy today is just that, digits. You know, when you get paid, you get digits put into your account when you work, or someone pays you, they transfer from one account into another. There's no cash transaction going about. It's just some digits are taken out there and put over here all over the world. So it's all fiction, there's no substance. Over here we've got uh, uh, responsibility, if you like. Responsibility, accountability. We're responsible for living, no one can live my life for me. I take account of everything I do. Over here No responsibility, if you like, obligations to the state. Over here we might be presumed to have an obligation to a higher source, to the creator, whatever that may be. You know, I can't define it. What I do know is that, you know, I did an agricultural science course. I know how complex a cell is. And for an argument to say that it evolved is just ludicrous. That's like saying the biggest supercomputer on the planet, somehow its parts all came together. But not only that, the software, the complex software that runs it, all came together just like that, instantaneously, and it ran the computer. You'd say, well, which planet in this hemisphere do you come from? Well, a cell is far more complex than the most sophisticated computer. So I'm not having making statements about you know, people's faith or anything. Me personally, I know that there's a higher force, whatever that is. And I don't, you know, put my finger on what that is because I don't have all the answers. All I know is somewhere we were created along the along the line of things, and if the system when I say system, the establishment, governments, the state, whatever, if they recognise that there's a creator, I'm happy to use that against them. It's very easy. You know, the judge might say, don't you bring that Bible into the court, or don't you bring God into this court, which G-O-D has a different meaning too, by the way, but I might go there. <coughs> we can say to them, well, Your Honour, the recorder, Mr. Ripple, Mrs. Recorder, do you have an oath of office. Yes, I do. Thank you. And you have all your friends. I never go into court without friend. <coughs> friends. Any of you believe in a creator? All the hands go up. Your Honour, <laughs> do you swear an oath of office or operate under one? He'll be silent. So you memorialise his silence. Silence is a, is a dishonour and it's regarded as tacit consent. So if you remain silent, you've agreed to something. So don't ever keep your mouth closed now, or don't reply to something in writing. So, oh, you were silent, Your Honour. I take it you agree. For and on this court record, let the court record show your silence as your agreement that, whatever it is that you were agreeing to. In this case, you agree that um, I didn't bring the Creator into this room today. You did by having an oath of office. There you go. So you've got it now memorialised on the court record. That's how you beat them. See, at the back of their head, they've got this thing called a 44 Magnum. And judges have been killed for giving a ruling counter to the banks, which control the globe, by the way. Banks and insurance companies. So what you've got to do is put a Magnum now in the front of his head. And say, which bullet would you like, sir? Without using those words. Don't they have a Bible in the witness stand? There's another way. Your Honour, I don't, I don't recall bringing him in here. 
but don't you have a copy of the scriptures just over there? So you reflect it back on him, so he looks guilty. It's just mindset, people, because we don't want to argue. Now, there's another word which I didn't mention, but you're breaking presumptions, very important, because the biggest presumption that's made, the state makes, is that you're one of their chattel. So you have to show that you're not. And that way you escape them. The second thing is showing your intent. Is your intent honourable or dishonourable? They're presuming, the state I'm talking about, that it's dishonourable. So we have to show, and there's a process by what comes out of here, but also paperwork, that our intent is honourable. The third thing is, which Winston brought out, Winston Shroud is a well-known speaker, very lovely man, and a, a credit to the to the mankind, if, if you like. What's his name? <coughs> Winston Shroud. Shroud. You knew Google search, or look at his material called Solutions in Commerce. <coughs> Actually, on the DVD, you'll see uh, on that DVD there's four folders. If you open, uh, that's if you open, when you open a CD. One of them is called CD Info. That has a lot of my work on there. Not everything, but it's got a lot on there. Thousands of dollars worth of information. I can tell you now, like. The administrative processes, some people are selling them for $200. There's probably 30 or 40 on, on there. For all sorts of different issues, dealing with state penalties, tax, lawyers, banks, whatever. They're good examples there. But Also, there are books in there. Some of them I scanned in there, rare books which are banned internationally. Mindset books. There are also books there from Winston. That's what I was getting to, from Winston Shroud. Fabulous books, must reading, easy to digest, common language. Books by Robert Menard, for instance. A friend of mine in New Zealand put one together called I Want a Break Free. Remember the old song? And I want a break free. Great book, very easy reading. Mary Croft's got, got material there. I put a lot of things together. So if you go into the thing called books under there, you'll have some happy reading probably for the next 12 months solid. So I just thought I'd share that. But the thing about uh, claims is the world operates on claims. It started like with gold and silver. You had to lay a claim. When you, when you want to have a claim, you've got to actually stake the claim. In other words, if you don't stake your, stake your claim or state your claim, you don't have a claim. So you can't make a claim without stating it or putting a stake over it. And Claims are very, very powerful things. Once you have a claim, then you have something of substance and something that can be enforced. <coughs> now, I'll just backtrack a little bit. And, uh, I won't finish that mistake. When I said this morning, um, you know, sometimes do you feel like you're not listened to? You know, when you're talking to bureaucrats at any level. There's a hierarchy of authority, if you like. Or whatever. The creator made man, man created government. So, in that hierarchy, just those two there, who in fact is the creditor and who is the debtor? Isn't he the creditor? He created. This is the created. That's the creator. Can man tell the creator what to do? A lot do, but not without going into dishonour. But generally, man can't, uh, well, he can't create something that's superior to him. He can only create something subordinate to him. That's, that's a maxim of law. The creator cannot be... Sorry, the creator cannot be regulated by the created. So in this scenario, man and government, who is the creditor and who is the debtor? Man is the creditor, the government's the debtor. That's right. Absolutely. Now the trick was, 
if you look, when, when we had substance over here, <coughs> that's man. We had man. Man had uh, common law, if you like. Over here we have admiralty, which is also fiction law. And under the common law, man created what's called government. And he put a constitution together which basically said, we the people, by the people, for the people, for the benefit of the people, because you know, so many people coming into the world that they needed to form some sort of a system to maintain order. You know, we're not all farmers, we're not all uh, you know, in the bush surviving, there's actually civilization. So they created government by way of constitution. Now, in the constitution, does it say we the persons, by the persons, for the persons. Anyone ever had a look at a constitution? Yes. I've got one at home, I should have brought it. Does it say persons or does it say people? People. 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 Private. Person. Public. Where in the constitution does it say the government has to protect persons? So if we're all persons now, and we've consented to that because we didn't rebut the presumption in our lifetime, so we accepted that we're the name on the birth certificate and we are state chattel, so we are slaves, because we were silent. So does the, is the Constitution valid anymore? It can be, if you bring it up and you've broken the presumption of being chattel, <coughs> But because there's no no birth and no people anymore, governments have created what's called person. Well, it's actually corporations. Governments created corporations, including persons. And if we believe that's us, who here in this arrangement is the creditor and who is the debtor? Government's the creditor. Right. The government is now the creditor. So how can we tell the government what we want and what we want to do, and what we want them to do? Rebut the assumption. assumption. That's right. Individually. You know, forming parties for chattel isn't going to make a big difference, because they're still chattel, still persons. But if enough people wake up one day and find that little loophole out here, Birth certificate BC is off. It's also called a transmitting utility. Transmitting utility. What that means is it transfers information from one corporation to another. The birth certificate is dead. It's a piece of paper, isn't it? There's a name on there called a corporation, which is your capitalised name. The state created it. Perhaps they have title to it too, as co-trustees, and also possibly co-beneficiaries. We don't need to worry about that. Birth certificate, because we are now in fiction, because of what happened during the created depression and world bankruptcy, everything went into fiction. Anyone ever read the book um, Alice in Wonderland? Yep. Describes it very well. I'll cover that in a minute. So the world went into fiction. Well, how can man talk to government? That's a corporation here. How can man talk to dead? They can't. So now the government, as a remedy for you, set up a birth certificate which wasn't there before 19, or not. They changed the birth certificate in 1933 to that of a corporation name, whereas before then it was in a living name. My birth certificate, I was born in France, and my birth certificate is on a living name. It's only a yep. So is that I don't see very many of them, but there's more to it than just that too. If it's inside a box, it's regarded as fiction too. 
So you have to look at several parameters, but I'm covering just the very basics, because this people can understand. He became uh, capital when I arrived in Australia. You see, my, uh, my citizenship became in capital. Yes. Yes. It's a pity in a way, because we, we don't know at the time, but we don't need citizenship. We don't need anything, you know. <coughs> You can, you can return all that. There's a mechanism to do all that. You don't need any of that. I, I haven't had a license since 2003. I don't need them. And boy, did I get into some trouble in the early days. If you do a search on my name, I'm a radical. You better watch this terrorist guy. Because I've got an army. You know, I've got tanks and the military out training. <laughs> Just do a search. You'll see it. Man, I like it. But, but the thing is... I've had successes. I broke out of the system. This is a runaway slave. And once you've broken out through that window in the, in the private, they cannot recapture you. But I'll tell you something, they will do their best to stop you. But once you're gone, there's no way you can come back unless you choose to. And I don't fancy wanting to come back into the public where I'm a slave. I like it where I am. And I'm hoping that a lot of other people join me, just like they have in Victoria this last <laughs> so if, if people believe they're now persons, they are chattel. So the key is getting back to here. And there are mechanisms for doing that. Breaking presumptions is one. We've got what's called, there are many mechanisms, but one that's very good is uh, what's called an affidavit of, of uh, notice of understanding and intent and claim of right. And that's a mouthful, but we'll share some of that at the end of the day. It's all in the workshop menu. <clears throat> By lodging that notice, and it's a process on key people from the Queen down, you're setting up a standing. But the documentation is only part of it, a small part of it. But if they recognise it, well, great. But the key is what comes out of here because there are many mechanisms that the establishment use to control us. And I'm sure some of you are aware of some of those. Can I just rub that out? I'm going slowly to start, only because once you grasp some of these concepts, everything else will fall into place. Yeah. It's very important that people uh, get the, the concepts. What might be some of the ways that we are being used uh, to control us, for example? Centrelink. Yeah, Centrelink. So people get handouts. Is that what you mean yep. by that? Yep, money. So Source they of income. lose some of their drive, maybe. Anybody else? Medibank. Medibank? Yeah, we do that together. Medibank. Taxation. Taxation. Money, tax. Licenses, registration. <laughs> Launch. Yeah, tax yeah. through. Back there. <coughs> Anybody know what the number one biggest uh, cost of living is today in the Western world? Tax. Bingo. Anywhere from 60 to, I think, 82% in Australia. Second highest tax country in the world in 1999. I'm not sure today, but it probably is still the same. Second biggest is what? Mortgage. It's not all direct, you know, you pay direct taxes, but there is so much indirect now. It's actually more than the direct tax. So you don't see it all the time. But with this, imagine giving back maybe seven out of seven dollars out of every ten just in tax. Isn't that slavery? Mm. Would it make a difference if you didn't have to pay tax? Yes. We're going to show you how to escape a lot of things. But you can't do it by being a chattel. You can only do it by being free man. Not even free man on the land. I don't use that anymore because, look, I wasn't on the land then, was I? <laughs> so it's not always just that. You know, free man or woman is sufficient. And if in the hierarchy you're above government, what obligations have you got to the government? None. None. Absolutely zilch. I haven't paid rates since 2003. I haven't paid tax since 1999. You know, taxes are collected to pay the interest on the national debt. GST is used 
to fund the military of every nation. And banks don't. So when you learn how to keep what you earn, you might be helping the economy here by keeping the money in Australia. Have anyone noticed there's hardly any money in the economy? Because it's being siphoned off to the IMF? Yeah. Guess who owns the tax offices and councils around the world? Anyone got any idea? Yeah. Uh, IMF. Just do a search, Google search. Find out the uh, ACN numbers for Australia. You can go into the government uh, website for ASIC. ASIC and do Google searches on names like Liberal Party, National Party, Labor Party, Councils. Commonwealth of Australia is in owned. Washington. <laughs> The armed forces were sold to Tenex, an American arms manufacturer, back in 1996. It's nothing that's Australian anymore. We're, we're foreigners. We're Australians in a foreign country. Anyway. Any other ways of controlling us? We've missed some of the big... Education. education. Big one. Mm. That's a big... One of the biggest. Or perhaps lack mm. of... Mika. Oh, there's another biggie. Mm. Now we're getting somewhere. Mm. Media, aren't we dumbed down? Look at international news on the internet. It's usually the opposite of what we're fed here. Very, you know, it was the troops were never going to Iraq. Remember, oh, our troops aren't going to Iraq. And then he did this. You know, the Toyota jump? Because he's a puppet. Every prime minister's a puppet. <laughs> Fluoridation, vaccination, and other things that cause all this. They all contribute and they will accelerate things. How about things like... Um, Securities, police, army and everything else? Fear. Yeah. Fear. If Fear. you don't do that, we're coming for the house. Yeah. You know? Always, every letter has got a fear factor. Where does fear come from? Safe. Well, the sit <laughs> That's one Sorry, word, Brian. but it's true. It I'll use the adversary. Yes, thinking. Which, by the way, Mammon. In the old language, mammon. Anyone heard of mammon? Yeah. The deceiver. Now, I'll we'll go through the point of origin in a moment. Because people say, oh, governments, you know, uh, that judge, he hasn't got jurisdiction, he hasn't got authority. Well, he's an arbitrator. He has got authority. If you go into someone's home and start dictating to them how, what you're going to do in their house, wouldn't you get thrown out? <laughs> Wouldn't they have some amount of authority in their house? Maybe not over your body, but certainly in their house. But when I go into court, I give the judge a bit of respect. He might not have authority over my body, so I say, I'm here only with limited jurisdiction, and he'll, he'll smile, because he knows that I'm here with limited jurisdiction, because he's got the jurisdiction over his property. So why be like some people down in Sydney and go in there with your fists in court and get thrown out every time? Man, if that, he could be such a strong ally because he's got conviction. I don't know if you know what I'm referring to, but there's a few like that. But if they could just get the concept, man, he'd be strong. He'd be ten times stronger. Point of origin. <coughs> Fear. We operate out of what? Love, isn't it? Yes. Isn't that how we're aren't we supposed to treat our neighbour yes. as we like to be treated? Love thy neighbour, love thy creator. We were given two commandments by the alleged Messiah. And by the way, there have been about 17 of them. So I'm not saying he didn't walk the earth or not. I don't know, I wasn't there. But the scriptures say he did. But it certainly is very powerful, the language that is in that New Testament. Fear, uh, what other factors? Education from day one. Brainwash, brainwash, brainwash. Media, what about this one? Languages. Language. I didn't mention some of the things. Can I rub some of that off? Are you happy that you've taken notes that you want to offer there? It just makes a bit more room, that's all. person, haven't we? What about citizen? And 
if you've got computers, you can do Google searches on definitions, but having a, a dictionary there is very useful. What about resident, tax payer, rates payer, driver, love that one, driver. Yeah, but you're, you're a driver, aren't you? Really? Do I look like a corporation to you? Do I not look like a man? Yeah. Well, I can't be both, can I? Here, here's a definition of driver, because I carry the book in the car, if there's an issue. Spouse. I haven't looked up that one. I haven't looked that one up. I'll have to, have to check that one up. Yeah. Driver or uh, vehicle. You know all the American gangster film and police shows? That's all that ever comes out of America <laughs> now. Get out of that vehicle! <laughs> Do you know? When in fact, my thing is a chariot or a car. Copyright words. And if you use their language, then maybe by enjoinder you become their chattel. So when I'm talking in public, you know, if I'm at a desk somewhere to a bureaucrat, I don't mention any of this stuff. That's dangerous. And they may be actually holding court. If you're in public, they can hold a court by your language. When you're in outside of a court in a real, you know, one of their courts, Supreme Court, for example, outside talking to the lawyer. Mr. Patel, well, just one minute. No, please address me by the name Mark. Yeah, but Mr. Patel, no, uh, I've just instructed you. Why are you now dishonouring me? Okay, Mark, no worries. Because if you're Mr., you're now chattel again, and they can have it over you. So you break presumptions full time when you're talking to the public. Get them thinking you're. And, and I treat people with respect. I'm happy for you to call me Mark. And, and what was your first name, please? Because I only see a man in front of me. I don't see a person or a chattel or a corporation. And I bring them up with me. Because I'm operating out of love, not fear. And, you know, we've, we've educated a lot of these chattel to come out. And they love it just as much as we do, because don't you think they're just as brainwashed as we were? Same with a policeman. Mate, the Sarge doesn't even come near me anymore. And he's got reasons for that. Because he hired him in a witness box and he looked like facing jail. But, you know. <laughs> but um, he came to my house one day and he said, may I come in? So he was courteous. And I said, brother, come in. You know, have a cup of tea with me. See the mindset? Ditch the fear, because people operate out of love, not fear. There's no reason to have fear anymore, folks, once you know who you are. So I said, um, you know, I'm quite happy to chat with you. I've, you know, I've got 30 minutes. He said, oh, no, I've got to go again. He had something to serve. I said, I'll accept that, no problem. On behalf of the debtor, because it's not me, he knew what I was talking about. He knew enough by then. I said, why do you think I do what I do, brother? Do you think it's for me? I've got children here. You know, am I not doing it for you too, maybe? Because if people like me are gone, who is the system going to come after next? Maybe it's you. Maybe I'm helping you to protect you as well. And you know, they know that I'm passive. The records show that I'm passive, that I'm helpful. I don't harm anyone. <coughs> I, in fact, help them to uphold their own laws as well. And it's come out a number of times. Sorry about that, I've got a dry throat. So, you know, there's no fear in my life because I don't need it. And I learned that from a very early age. You know, my parents are German. You get sort of attacked at school, like little schools, you know, you're crowd, you're this, you're that. So if you're, into, if you're independent already in mindset, it just follows through the rest of your life, doesn't it? But we found out a lot of skullduggery. I went to uni, did agricultural science. Uh, I love um, the agricultural industry. I like natural things. So here I do a report on the dangers of chemicals and, and uh, chemical sprays in particular. And I got marked down for it. And I realised later, once I was out of uni, the universities are run by the drug companies and cartels and chemical companies, 
just like the whole world is controlled by the big corporations, particularly banks. They own everything. The political spectrum, the military, the religious orders, all of them, Muslim, Islam, all of them, they're all fakes. I shouldn't say that's a claim. Sorry. Could they not be fake? That puts the onus on somebody else to break the presumption then, or to testify. But they're all controlled. Everything in life today, from the uh, cradle to the grave, is controlled. So where do you escape it unless you go out in the private and learn from private people? Um, cause and language, yeah, that's what I covered. Sorry if I digress a bit, but it's just if you're made aware, you can already start to take the steps to get around them and maybe even teach others and particularly children. Um, yeah, I mentioned about 1933. I'll just backtrack a little because it's in context of that was a very significant year around the Western world where the, um, it started a lot, it's been going for hundreds of years, people have control it, but key point was 1913. Who's heard of the American Federal Reserve Bank? That was the last key bank. It's nothing, it's not federal at all. It's a private bank, but it was the last major one to be taken over by the private banksters, the, the families that control the globe. And they tried a number of times beforehand, but there were very wealthy Americans who knew that if the, if the Federal Reserve Bank is privatised, they control the money supply, they dictate the terms of lending, and they control everything that they do. Henry Ford was uh, recorded as saying some key things about the bank. I can't remember the exact paragraph now, but so was uh, Rothschild. He who controls the money, I care not who controls the armies of the world, he who controls the money supply controls everything. So, 1913 they finally captured the American Federal Reserve Bank. And they did that by actually building a big boat a year earlier and they, those who opposed to privatising were actually invited to go on a trip across the Atlantic. What happened to that boat by the way? Where did the opposition go? To the bottom. So they just passed by a boat. So it only took... Was it part of the harvest <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think it was actually passed through so, our home in, in the early hours of the morning when there was no one there. Yeah, some of the other other parties weren't there. They would have made a difference. So they made sure they stacked the vote. There weren't many people there anyway. But they passed it through, fully knowing that if it was privatised, then those people could not only just issue the currency, but they want to get paid an interest on, on lending. Well, where did the interest come from? It was never produced. They issued principal, and they want principal and interest. Well, where does the interest come from? Well, it came, there you going, it came from selling public assets. And how long did it take before there were no public assets left? 20 years. 20 years. 1913, they took over the Federal Reserve Bank. 1933, America went bankrupt, along with most of the Western world. Australia, New Zealand, I think, was 32 already. But the legislation went through already by 1927 to 32. We have what's called the Financial Emergencies Acts. And I have them. There's about six that make up that financial emergency. In America, they had only House Joint Resolution 192, which declared a state of national emergency. <coughs> and it permitted uh, fiat or reserve bank notes to be issued to alleviate that national emergency because they passed laws that people could not own um, gold and silver because there were no people. Everybody became a person because they issued birth to and everyone said, yeah, we want those benefits and privileges. So they became citizens of the US. And as a citizen, you're a corporation. A judge said to me one day, well, you do have the right to do this, that and the other. 
I said, thank you, Your Honour. However, you may keep those rights, which were really state benefits and privileges, and I'll keep my pre-existing rights. Thank you. I wasn't dishonourable. It's just I wasn't going to give up something that was stronger than what he was offering me, because he's trying to bring me back into being chattel, where they could put me in jail for a few years. You think, I'm going to let that happen? No. That's another story I'll share another time, but... You know, when, when you're on the road and if you've got, if you haven't done this, which I hadn't done yet, shown my intent, I just didn't have a license. So three times I got picked up in about a six month period. And after that I was in court every week for the next 18 months, 2005, 2006. And it was that long because I didn't know enough to stop them and close them out. And they didn't know enough to, to get me into jail. But by the end of it, I was getting better. Is that a good time to learn stuff? <laughs> you try making a living when you're in court every week. Man, I know I kept kids in private school too. We were dancing. But anyway, we succeeded. We closed it all out. Now they can never get me unless I harm someone. A man or woman won't go to jail unless they actually harm another man or woman in some way. But if, if, if you're dealing with a corporation like... <coughs> Queensland Transport, for example, or Queensland Police Services, how can you harm a piece of paper? You can't. So any penalty can only ever be commercial. Can't be jail. If you break the presumption of being personal, I see a lot of people going to jail for little things like two or three times being out there driving unlicensed. Well, I can't drive. I'm not allowed to because I don't have a license. Simple, isn't it? But I do journey, and I travel, and I have a lot of fun. Because if I use drive, if, if I drive, man, that's called jail. So why would I drive? I don't want to drive. And besides, I can't drive anything. All I do is steer. The engine's in the car, not my stomach. <laughs> See how they use terminology against you? All I do is put my foot down and the thing goes faster. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I go, wow, every time, because when I hit the, hit, the, hit the accelerator now, it flies much faster. With the and hydrogen I, thing I on it. I tell some stories I've had, geez, I tell you. I love it, because I'm always going to the airport for one, either because I'm going or I'm picking up or whatever. And, you know, the e tolls because <laughs> there's a long queue, and I just zoom straight past, no camera or nothing, because they can't. I don't have their plates, and I don't have their registration label. In the registration, there's a little wire. That's where the cameras sense everything. So when you're going past, I've seen a copper one day. You know, can't see, I'm invisible. <laughs> being free, but it'd be nice if a few more, actually on Tuesday we did a presentation in this room, and a lot more are going to come on board now, because the fear factor is dissipating, because I've been doing this for a long time, about 15 months now, just going around wherever I like, but in Victoria I've had six workshops this year, and there's a wave of them, there's four of them out there, that, that they've had some hiccups, one of them was on the way to Supreme Court with me, for, to be my witness about two months ago. And he got pulled up right just down the street in Melbourne. And I had um, a policeman pull him up. And anyway, he rang us and said, oh, no, there's about a dozen of them now. Cars flying from everywhere. You want some help? He said, no, 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 hold him at bay. And all he was doing is, I don't have a contract with any of you. They're ready to pounce on him. Don't have a contract. I'm going to hold every one of you to account if you touch me. You show the contract. For if there isn't one, then it's assault, rape. And, and, uh, and kidnap and, and he was at it for anyway we didn't see him for half an hour and I thought because we wanted to process this habeas corpus to get a living, a living out of jail but anyway and we needed him we need two witnesses so I said Dave get on the phone you know so we got uh, how are you going oh no they're still here and that and anyway we're, we're coming so we went down there and we sort of said what's happening here you know you, you realise there's a man and you know da 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 I said, yeah, well, we're not to, yeah, we're going to let him go, but he's not to get in the car. And I said about 50 times, you're not driving this car. And I said, Ahmed, you're not driving it, are you? He said, no, no, I'm not driving. But, you know, the car was booby-trapped. 
what they were doing is he hadn't done his shown his intent. He hadn't done the paperwork. He just loved my plates, so he made his own plates and <laughs> so on, on top of the Victorian one. <laughs> so anyway, this policeman is, is shattering the plate, <sighs> cut himself again, broke another nail. <laughs> he gives him a pile of, of rubble back with his plate, right? And then takes the Victorian ones. So what they put in the media is the cars are booby trapped. <laughs> you know, what a joke. But anyway, so we walk up there, do what we have to do, come back. I said, you're definitely not going to drive this now, are you? He said, oh, no, I won't. I said, but you are going to journey at home, aren't you? And he goes, yeah, of course. So off we went home again. And another girl had some issues. And anyway, that's all gone now. And mate, we creamed him in the court there the other day too. We, I went down to Melbourne and gave him a hand too. And anyway, now they don't touch them those four people, but there's about 16 others coming on board. And, and it was all in the media when I got down there on that Thursday. It was everywhere. The radio station, TV stations, current affairs, news, everything. And then went to Sydney because the next day a guy from Sydney and Brisbane called me up and said, hey, this is me, all these people in Melbourne. I said, yeah, they're the ones that came to the meetings the last few times. You know, and, and I think, we're being left behind. We started. Where's all the Queenslanders? So come on, we need about 20 or 30 plates on the road to, you know, get some action going. Wow. Okay. So we sort of digress, but what I'm trying to show you is ditch the fear. Because we've done the hard work already. The hardest work's done. We have standing. So all you've got to do is follow in our slipstream and it'll get easier for you. But just learn some language for your own protection and get your standing done. We'll show how that's done later. And then once you're out here in the private, you'll be able to breathe better. Imagine getting out of mortgages or loans, for example. When I say getting out, it's not. You're offsetting them. So you don't have to have a payment every month, which drains your finances. No more tax debts, for example. Rates, um, fees and licenses and fines and penalties and all that. Imagine if you didn't have those obligations. Wouldn't that make it easier to live? Mate, it's fun. I'm telling you, it is fun. And when you see a real nasty letter, call the bluff. That's what I've done for years now. You want to take my home? No problem. But I notice that you haven't answered my questions from earlier letters. I just wish to know what my lawful obligations are. And then I'll do whatever I have to do to settle it. So please show this, that, and the other. And they can't, because it's a fraud. And once you've honourably addressed their letter, they don't have the commercial energy to proceed. It's simple, but you've got to ditch the fear. You've got to ditch the fear. So 33, the world went bankrupt. So now everyone is chattel. But the government says in their constitution they have to protect the people. So the banks just said, well, you've got no more assets to give us. We want our blood. So the government said, well, we do have the labour of the people. So that'll do. But the government in its wisdom said, well, we have to give people, not persons, people a remedy. If they wake up, and some might, and they didn't until about the late, mid, late 90s, then they need a remedy. And the remedy was that they set up over in America, it's called like a private prepaid asset account. It's a consolidated account. In New Zealand, it's a crown consolidated account. Australia's got something similar to it. I've just forgotten off the top of my head. But when the um, certificate of live birth is produced, we never get that. That goes somewhere into the world market and is trading and it makes credits, it generates credits. So there may be hundred, hundreds of millions even in that account for the living. The imitation is the one that we get, the certificate of um, birth certificate. So yeah, I'll just close on that. So there's an account. So if someone wakes up, they're entitled to use it. The government's using it now without telling you. But there's a standing you can set up that gives you the right then to use that because it's for your benefit. So you don't need this folding stuff. Now, we haven't perfected it. We certainly used it to offset public debt because it's, it's simply a ledger. 
you know, there's debts and there's credits, and the prepaid account, the consolidated crown consolidated account, is just an account of credits against any alleged debts. So we just tender that as payment to offset. So things like court orders, things like uh, I did on a Telstra, uh, not Telstra, an AAPT account that worked. Um, Brita did it on gas, a friend of mine did it on gas. Um, oh, fines, all fines, they work. Um, and other things too, but we, we haven't yet done it on real estate, though we were that close, <coughs> and hopefully we can share something more at the next time, because we're pursuing injuries now. The public trustee dishonored us, though they were scared rattles, I can tell you. Anyway, that's another story. I'll share that another time. Are there any questions and then we can have our first break? You mentioned about not paying your fees and registration fees, etc. <coughs> These fees were alleged to be putting in the infrastructure and if everybody uh, ceases to pay some form of um, recompense to the, back to the government, where do we get our infrastructure from? It's a good question. I can answer that one. The same way we did before 1913. We print the money and actually the money to Australian companies who employ Australian workers. Yeah, today they wouldn't do that. They don't do that. But back then they did. You know, when you wanted something done, the banks could actually raise the capital against the asset that they wanted produced. So they could raise any amount of credit. Unlimited. That's how they financed the war. Today, since 72, when Whitlam first borrowed from the IMF, it's always conditional. You give us the tax because we know you ain't going to pay the principal. Because if you could, you wouldn't have come for us for the loan in the first place. So what they do is they take the tax off everybody as interest payments on offshore borrowings. All to the IMF. So what funds the infrastructure in every Western country, and nearly every country today, because they're all controlled by the IMF now, is borrowings, offshore borrowings. The whole GDP runs on borrowings. So they collect the tax just to pay the interest. And the reason that the taxes are rising by about 2% here in Australia each year, mostly indirectly, is because the borrowing still keep going up. They still got to borrow every year for the fund. So somewhere they've got to fund it. So when we keep our tax here, we hope that we kick the IMF in the proverbial and help the economy here. You've mentioned Whitlam there. How does First this two billion dollars came from the IMF? Uh, where does the Kemlani affair fit into that? Oh, I was a bit young for all that. I know there was some skullduggery yeah, going on around then, but... But you've got a fertile mind that <coughs> Whitlam was trying to borrow money from Ken Lane. Privately. He was trying to privately. privately borrow. Maybe that's why he got into trouble, because the IMF wanted to lean on Australia and maybe slap Whitlam around and stabbed him in the back later. I don't have all the paperwork for that. So, you know, that takes Ken some Lane research. Is he was a front man for um, oil sheets who were going to loan the money privately to the Australian government. They and so it the IMF. Oh, bad boy. Yeah. Just like, you know, when Hitler came to power in 33 and realised who controlled what around the world and then kicked the, uh, the shysters out of the country before the war and nationalised some of the banks and brought Germany back from the abyss. It was the most indebted country on the globe. But they didn't have uh, they didn't have that creative accounting. They actually produced with backing, and that had to be destroyed. So they levelled that country. How can one little country take on the globe? The biggest military countries at that time was the UK. They were number one. Russia number two. Then America and France. And that, you know, if a country, one country today stood up to that cartel, well, like Iraq did, they'd be levelled in a week. Germany stood up for six years. Just like Pauline Hanson, by the way, didn't she go around in a car and educate masses and everyone loved her? You try and find a German that didn't respect Hitler, even today. Because he went out there telling them, this is what's going to happen to our country because Russia's got 300 airports already built in 1925 to take Europe, not Germany, Europe. We're going to fight to the man to stop it. 
And he knew he's going to lose because, you know, Chamberlain, who led uh, the UK, was going into the war with Hitler to smash the world order. And then he got sacked and brought in a warmonger who withdrew and went against him. Hitler knew that Germany was going to lose then, but they still fought. And they lost. And they got leveled, I'm telling you. Not one, not one city over 50,000 remained standing. They got bombed. Just in Dresden, something like a million people evaporated in a 10-hour bombing blitz, just like a nuclear bomb. Just disappeared. Okay, I want to wonder, Mark, that what, what, the Poland attacked Germany at the start of the war? There was a lot of France, yeah, The France attacked Germany too, and England, they went up there, or what? 50,000 Germans were actually killed in Poland under instruction from the UK. The UK were already saying to Poland, we'll come into the war to protect you, and if you can cause some trouble and get Hitler to come into Poland, because Hitler said, if you kill one more national in Poland, we're coming in. And he did, very quick. I but he knew. That's true. <coughs> We've got the documents. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, but they, we make the, the war for, so you know, for that. Uh, what's happening in France? What's happening in Belgium? What's happening in Poland? He acted what, very the fast. England actually bombed German territory nine occasions before the war started. I've seen a library of books from the other side countering what you'll see in the West. And the, and the Russians, when they came in at the end of the war, burnt all the books. Yeah, but, but I've seen the, the Russians went together with Germany to, to attack Poland. They were yeah. really driven to a well, plan. How come they, and they all together, declared... you know, no, that is too stupid. Why didn't, why didn't the world declare war on Russia? They invaded Poland from the other side. Hitler took and one French side. Hitler no, no, actually... they make it pact, Ribbentrop and Molotov, they make it pact to attack Poland together. Yeah, Hitler said to Stalin, you come from that side, I'll come from this yeah, side. Yeah, that's right, tell Why didn't the rest of the world attack Russia? They only attacked Hitler. <laughs> they didn't attack Hitler they, they, because England and France got a Poland, you know, they got a pact, you know, to defend that's right. Poland. They got a pact. They didn't have the pact to attack Germany. Uh, England did. No, no, no. They declared war on Germany. Because they, they, they got a pact with Poland, they would oblige them that that's to, to, to the day they attacked There's them. a lot involved there. No, but no, I, no, I, no. I've seen so many documents. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. The point is that no, the that, that country didn't go belly up under the Western system. And they had to be smashed because the economics minister, Schacht, is actually a Hebrew Jew loyal to Germany, and they bartered 85 percent of their G G GDP was barter. So the world embargo against Germany meant nothing. They just traded with uh, the uh, Arab countries and countries around them, and bypassed all that. And they loved it for it. And he brought the world back up to what it was in 1914, the world GDP, because it was leveled after first year, the first World War. But look, it's a history you'll never hear. I, I know that, but I've seen. No, but just education of the Second World by that things like that. I think that is a little bit. That 50 million people died. Well, outside. well, I, I agree. War yeah. is irrelevant. But what they justified that with with, 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 with something didn't, like that? Didn't Bush finance both sides that of the war? We, we, we know we just the Bush now and everybody. But I think history, the history part, that is not. A, uh, well, who's in control of the media? Do you believe anything they say no, today? No, I, but I, I, what I should deliver to you. Okay. In my other yeah. question from earlier, is that yeah. okay? Yeah, sure. Because the government use a person's full name, um, John Henry William Jinks, as one of the methods to track people, some people drop out the middle names. So it would be just John Jinks. Now, when you talk before, you use three names. Is there any importance in using one's name that identifies See, if you haven't got the middle name that's actually an adulteration as well your the, the name given you is on your birth mother. certificate well no it was actually on an application for a birth certificate yep the mum would have put a complete name on there okay. and that identifies the living <coughs> and then two documents would have been raised a, a certificate of live birth and a birth certificate mm -hmm. So we only see the image, um, but if a, if a name is left off, that is still an adulteration. It's even worse than that. 
what they do now, because we've educated the system with this name thing, they'll write to you even in the proper name or your name, but then they'll put the address in a corporate sense. So if one thing is adulterated, all is adulterated. So we have to rebut that too and say, please write as I've written to you or would it not be dishonour? And by the way, I believe I wrote to the man, why has a corporation written back, an alleged corporation? Could you show me how any corporation could have the corporate energy to lift a pen and to write, or to type a typewriter? So you're just exposing their fiction and their fraud. I don't write to corporations. I write to men and women in the correct format. Because, you know, otherwise I'm double-minded. Or you can play their game, if you like, and write your corporate name, and write to another corporate name. Dead can speak to dead. But I, I look alive, don't I? You do. I hope so, otherwise I shouldn't be here. So, are there any other questions? And you can't be a name anyway. They were going to use that against me in courts too. And I said, it never came up because the judge knew that I could break the presumptions. But how can I be a name? Isn't name private property? Just look at America where people have been sued, like, yes. you know, actors and that. Someone used their name in the public, next thing there's a lawsuit because someone's, you know, defamed them in the public. Name is copyright property. I've copyrighted my name. I can't copyright the name they've given, you know, the corporate name, but the, the living name, you can copyright that. Is copyright not automatic in Australia? Is. Automatic? Yes, uh, as a book publisher, uh, you, oh, with the moment you uh, complete a document, uh, it's copyrighted. It's, um, there may be many people with the same name, though, so. So you have to. It's hard to know. You to make it official. You send a copy, you If you write whatever the document is, you write a copyright <coughs> date and who, who the copyright is to. And then you send it off to the National Library of Australia and it gets logged into the National Library of Australia. There are ways of getting it uh, into the public record. <coughs> public records. The key is you're not a name. You know, they try to entrap me too. Oh, isn't that you? I say, no. Does that look like me? And that thing they do this? You know? <laughs> Am I not addressed by that name for the purpose of communication? I've done it in court, believe, and the judges love it. You know, if you can break the monotony of their day from processing all the sardines, <laughs> believe me, they love it. Okay, we're going to break now for, for 15 minutes and then we'll come back and do the next session. Queensland Uni. Queensland Uni. Excellence. Did you do Excellence at Queensland Uni? Excellence.